first issue to address is um, uh, whether registering your trademark is going to be useful and how important it is. Um, so to answer that, here are a few key points about the importance of trademarks. They are really an essential part of the identity of goods and services. They help deliver brand recognition. For example, they distinguish your company from the competition. They also help to build trust, reputation, and goodwill for your company, as well as play an important role in marketing and advertising. And in this way, your brand becomes an important asset which creates value in your business. I think we all instantly recognize well-known brands, and you may be surprised at how advanced businesses are in China and Southeast Asia in recognizing the value in registering trademarks. There are financing schemes available in places like Singapore and Malaysia to enable businesses to monetize their trademarks and other intellectual property for business growth and expansion. And it's increasingly common for local businesses to look outside China and the Southeast Asia region for inspiration, a trend that can easily lead to imitation of products branded or developed in other markets. Many trademark owners are confronted with this reality too late and only when their branding has been already copied or registered to local parties. First come, first serve is the theme you should really apply, meaning the first to apply to register a trademark is usually the one who will successfully register and own it. Ideally, start your trademark application before you start doing business in or with these markets. And bear in mind the need to register in each jurisdiction. So when you're looking at China, think about the need to also register in Hong Kong and Taiwan. And when looking in Southeast Asia, for example, at Thailand, think also about Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and so on. In fact, you can't look at one market in isolation. Goods and information flow quickly from country to country. In Southeast Asia, there is AFTA, the ASEAN Free Trade Area, a trade block agreement by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations supporting local trade and manufacturing in all ASEAN countries. It stands as one of the largest and most important free trade areas in the world. So if you sell your brand of products or services in one country, be prepared in case competitors jump in and register something similar next door. So, so China is a first to file jurisdiction, meaning it's important to be the first to apply to register your trademark there to avoid the danger of losing the right to use your brand. However, once you have filed an application to register, you cannot be overtaken by someone who subsequently tries to register your brand in the same class and subclasses. There is an increase in the number of trademark applications in China. Um, and a certain proportion of those filings are in bad faith. So while regulations in China have been modified to limit the amount of trademark applications a company can file, there is a loophole to this regulation. The amount of companies that a single person can register is not limited. So this is sometimes used as a way of filing multiple applications through different countries by individuals, even though they belong to a single person. And it may even result in tax cuts to the company's owner. China uses the Nice classification, as in Europe, but the Chinese version of the Nice classification differs. In China, product and service classes are divided into subclasses. You need to be aware, as this may cause problems. Uh, and what does this mean? Well, during trademark examination, the China Trademark Office does not assess the similarity of goods or services on a case-by-case -case basis. Instead, China operates a subclass system within each class as a convenient shortcut to determine the similarity of goods and services. Items classified into the same subclass are usually considered similar, while items classified into different subclasses are usually deemed dissimilar despite being in the same overall class. The number of subclasses within different classes varies greatly. There are small classes that contain fewer than five subclasses, 
through to large classes where there are approximately 20 subclasses and in the biggest case 54 subclasses. So as a foreign applicant you might choose a class heading as the trademark specification and assume the whole class is therefore covered but this is not true in China in practice. And firstly class headings are often not acceptable and usually have to be amended to reflect specific goods and services within that class. And secondly, even if a class heading is accepted, only the items specifically itemized in the text heading itself are covered. So for example, the applicant might register a trademark on clothing, footwear, headgear, and the heading for class, class 25, and therefore assume that all 13 subclasses that comprise the class are also covered. In fact, only those subclasses that relate specifically to clothing, footwear, headgear, are actually covered. It does not cover the other subclasses such as socks and related items and gloves and related items on ties and scarves, belts and so on. This means that a third party can still register the same trademark on those uncovered subclasses because goods in those subclasses are considered dissimilar to clothing, footwear, headgear during trademark examination. So in other words, the whole class is not covered. So when you're also when you're thinking about your uh, trademark registration in China, do consider how it will be used in the country where very few people speak English. So think about putting your trademark into Chinese. So taking a look now at the trademark protection in Southeast Asia, Countries in Southeast Asia also use a first to file system. You need to register in each country where you want to protect your trademark. It is best to carry out searches in each country where you want to register. This sometimes gets forgotten when international applications are made, but it's important because a country may refuse the application for local reasons. The Madrid protocol is administered by WIPO in Switzerland and you can use the global brand database on the WIPO website to carry out searches. But please note, while you can search simultaneously in different countries using the global brand database, it's advisable to search separately because simultaneous searches will tend to bring up registrations in all those countries and may miss some similar marks registered in just one or two locations. Be prepared that the time you have to deal with the application refusals or amendments can vary a lot. In some countries, the deadline for office actions, that's the time period given for a trademark applicant to reply to an application refusal or to amend the application in some way, can be short. In Thailand, it's 60 days. In Vietnam, for example, it's three months. Um, this does not necessarily give much time, especially if you need to appoint a local agent to handle the matter. And as in China, bear in mind the registration of a trademark in original Roman characters does not automatically protect the trademark against the use or registration of the same or a similar trademark written in local characters or, or scripts used in certain countries in Southeast Asia, such as Tamil, Thai, Lao, Burmese, or Khmer. So do consider registering a version of your trademark in the local language in the country of interest. Uh, also consider that some sort of local name will be adopted by local consumers and not necessarily with the right connotations or image that you would wish to convey. So here are a few points then for Southeast Asia. How does this then compare with uh, Latin America? Well, for that, I'll hand over to Ellie. Thank you, Simon. First of all, we need to clarify that the Madrid system is not implemented in most Latin American countries. Just Cuba, Colombia, Mexico, and most recently Brazil are members of the system. But this situation is expected to change in the near future, or at least in the future, uh, therefore, EU companies that want to have protection in American uh, countries may be interested in registering trademarks through the Madrid systems 
on the current members, that is Colombia, Cuba, Brazil, and Mexico, and hopefully extend the protection to further members once these uh, members enter into the system. Um, I think that we already know that registering in every country is an almost impossible task, specifically if you are doing business online. It is difficult to know ahead of time where the people that shop through your website come from. Having said that, there are ways to register your trademark internationally without having to go through the process of registering with individual countries. For example, if you are planning to sell your products in Argentina, Uruguay, Peru, and Brazil, maybe it has no sense to use the Madrid system because Brazil is the only member of the system and in the other countries you have to file national applications. But if your business plan also covers uh, Colombia and Mexico, for example, then you have to consider using the system. Now we are going to be talking about how to manage your trademark portfolio uh, through the Madrid system. If your company wishes to register your trademark abroad, a choice must, a choice must be made regarding the best way to do it. Uh, there are several ways in which you can register your trademark. For example, the national route, that means to file trademark application or applications with the IP office of each country in which you want protection, for example, China, Thailand, Bolivia, or Paraguay. The regional route that is um, applied through a regional trademark registration system with effect in all member states. For example, the Melux trademark uh, office, the WIPO here in Europe, and uh, for African countries, we have the WAPI and the ARIPO uh, system. And the third option is the international route that is filing through the Madrid system. This system allows your company to have a trademark protected in several countries with just one trademark application. And this is very important, one trademark application for several countries. The international route through the Madrid system may be, preferred, the, may be the preferred option when you want to seek protection in multiple markets, particularly if these are in different regions or uh, if you want flexibility to add new markets as your export plans develop through a subsequent estimation that is allowed in the Madrid system, or if you have a limited budget and, uh, or time uh, to spend on registration and management of your trademarks. Um, the Madrid system is also convenient due, due to the following reasons. You have access to a centralized filing and management procedure. We are going to see this later. And uh, you just have to file one application in one language and pay only one set of fees for protection in multiple markets. The Madrid system is also cost effective because you only file an international application, application which is the equivalent of a bundle of national applications saving time and money and you avoid paying for translations into multiple languages or working through the administrative procedures of multiple IP offices. Next, please. Mm. The Madrid system, contrary to the European framework, is a closed system. What does it mean? To be entitled to use the Madrid system, the applicant must be a national, of a member state or has an address for, uh, in a member sta state or have a real and effective industrial or commercial establishment in a contracted party for the Madrid system. We have to point out that all European companies fulfill these requirements. But if your company, for example, incorporated in France, has a subsidiary in Peru, this branch cannot use the international trademark because Peru is not member of the system. Another requirement is that the applicant needs to have registered or filed an application. It's what we call a basic mark in the IP office of the applicant's entitlement. This is what we call the office of origin. And finally, the international application must be sent by WIPO through the uh, office of origin. 
Regarding the last two issues, there are three different stages. Stage one, before you can file an international application, you need to uh, have already registered or have filed an application in your home IP office. The, the registration or application, as I said, is known as the basic mark. You then need to submit your international applications through this same IP office, which would certify and forward it to WIPO. For example, if you're a Spanish company, you can use your earlier Spanish or European framework. Stage two, WIPO only contacts a formal examination of your international applications. Once approved, your mark is recorded in the international register and published in a bulletin. WIPO will then send you a certificate of international registration and will notify the IP offices in all the countries where you wish to have your mark protected. Be aware that if you receive your certificate of registration, but the trademark is then refused in all the countries designated, of course, you don't have an international trademark, although you have in your records a certificate of a registration. And stage three, the IP offices of the countries where you want to protect your mark will make a decision within the applicable time limit, could be 12 or 12 months, depending on the country, in accordance with their laws. WIPO will record the decisions of the IP offices in the international registrations and then notify to you. And then in, in, in the next slides, we are going to, to see how to deal with these uh, provisional refusals. Next, please. Now, I, I want to give you some tips if you are planning to use the Madrid system. Uh, firstly, and I think that Simon was uh, talking about this, uh, before filing an international application, you should search to find out if identical or similar marks already exist or are pending in your target markets. In this sense, you can use public databases or, for example, a trainer view, which is a tool developed uh, by, um, by WIPO here in Alicante and which is very, very useful. Uh, discovering an identical or similar mark prior to filing may be preferable to find out later. Secondly, at the White Post website, you can find a guide which explains you more about the process, including your uh, eligibility to use the Madrid system, how to complete your application form, the required fees, you have also a calculator for the fees, and how to track the status of your application as it moves through the examination process. When submitting your, your international application, indicating an email address enrolls you to WIPOS e-notification service. This means that you will receive all notices or documents concerning your international application or registration via email. Also, the tool Madrid Monitor provides the status in real time uh, of an international application being processed by WIPO and the status of your international registrations in designated national offices. This allows you to see what is happening to your mark at any time. Next, please. Well, as you can see, there are several advantages of this system. Um, after filing the national or situation trademark application, the trademark owner has to file only one international trademark application in one language, paying one fee with its national or regional trademark office, instead of filing separately in the trademark offices of the different contracting parties in different languages and paying a separate fee for each filing. Changes subsequent to registration, such as a change in the name or address of the owner, which are quite common, or a change total or partially in the ownership, or because you have sent part of your or trademark to a third party, or a limitation of the list of goods and or services may be recorded with effect for several designated countries, um, contracting parties through a single simple procedural step and the payment of a single fee. And most important, there is only one renewal date. 
That means that at the time of the renewal, that is 10 years after a filing application, you have to renew the trademark for all the signatory countries at WIPO. Also, the um, streamlining of this process results in significant savings at the final stage of prosecution. Um, and finally, and this is the most um, problematic uh, issue in regarding the international system, if the home application or registration falls or is limited, which would, would result in a central attack on the international registrations, which I will explain in the next slide, the Madrid Protocol provides for a limit a period of three months during um, which an international registration may be transformed into new national or regional applications in the designated contracting parties. Next, please. Well, regarding the disadvantages of the systems, um, as I said before, one of the challenging characteristics, characteristics of the Madrid Protocol is the dependency of the international registration on the home application or registration. This can lead to a problem known as central attack. That means that if the home application registration is denied or cancelled during the five years following the international registration date, the international registration is also affected. On the contrary, one once the international registration has been in effect for five years, it becomes independent from the basic registration. At that point, the possible cancellation of the basic application or registration no longer has any effect on the international registration. And finally, if problems arise during examination or following publication of an international trademark application in a contracting party, for example, observations um, issued by the, the IP office or oppositions filed by a third party against our trademarks, this may reduce or um, eliminate savings of professional fees if assistance from a local trademark agent is required. I think that this is your turn now. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ali. Um, and that that uh, comprehensively outlines um, some of the uh, great ad advantages to the Madrid system. Um, uh, perhaps I can um, uh, just add that really the greater the number of countries included in a registration, I think the more cost effective the Madrid system becomes. Um, but conversely, if you're looking to register only in one or two countries, then it can be more cost effective to register nationally in those countries. And also, consider how urgent the registration is. Under the Madrid system, registrations are completed within a fixed deadline for registration or refusal, um, which can be 12 or typically 18 months. Yet if you apply nationally, the process can be much faster. In Cambodia, for example, the process takes six to eight months if you apply nationally, and that's nearly three times faster than the Madrid system. But the other side of the coin is true as well. Uh, for national registrations, the procedure can take longer. Uh, in Southeast Asia and in Indonesia, registration procedure can take as long as 36 or even 42 months. Also, the Madrid protocol doesn't apply everywhere. If you're using the system to register in China, be aware that the registration does not extend to Hong Kong or Taiwan. Um, and both um, are not part of the Madrid protocol. And similarly, in Southeast Asia, Myanmar is not a party to the Madrid protocol. Elias has already mentioned that not every country in Latin America um, has uh, joined the Madrid system. We've touched upon the issue of China's subclasses, but there's also the issue of obtaining a China trademark registration certificate. For China, normally, no pre-application screening is performed, and there's no chance to revise an application when you use the Madrid system. But that step is available if you register via 
um, a, a trademark agent directly in China. Uh, even when the trademark has been officially registered in China through the Madrid system, you will only receive a WIPO certificate stating the company's rights under Chinese trademark law. But in business reality and for legal applications, the Chinese authorities and Chinese businesses frequently do not acknowledge the certificate provided by WIPO, and instead they will require a copy of a certificate issued by the Chinese Trademark Office. The international registration, as Elia has mentioned, is dependent for five years on your original registration remaining in force during this period. Um, so if your original trademark is contested in any way, then the international application will be affected in the same way. Um, your trademark can also be opposed, as we've heard, in any of the designated countries. But if uh, successful, such an opposition will only affect the international registration in that country. <laughs> uh, bear in mind that if somebody opposes your mark, as, as Ellie has alluded to, and you withdraw or lose your challenge to an opposition, you may have to pay towards the other person's costs. Um, and any costs incurred are set according to the law of the national offices in the designated uh, uh, countries. So you may wish to seek uh, professional advice if you're international application is opposed. So having discussed the advantages and disadvantages, let's take a look at a couple of case studies to highlight issues that can actually arise with trademarks in other countries. Now this uh, case study looks at the trademark registration uh, in Thailand um, and deals with a, um, a, a trademark registered in the EU um, on a variety of products um, and you can see the, the copy of the character, uh, a cartoon uh, representing a urinating boy. Um, and this was registered in, in um, classes 9 for compact disc holders, uh, class 16 for printed matter, 18 for leather bags, uh, 21 for household or kitchen utensils, and 25 for clothing uh, in Europe. Uh, but in, in Thailand, um, the trademark office held that the device of a cartoon presenting a urinating boy is not polite and contrary to morality and therefore not registrable um, under the Trademark Act there. Um, so the, the ironic issue perhaps about this particular registration is the owner of that uh, trademark application was in fact a Thailand company called Propagandist Company Limited. Um, so the takeaway point is uh, what is acceptable for registration in one jurisdiction is not necessarily registrable somewhere else. And our second uh, case study, um, this time for, for China, deals with a, the language issue. Um, in, this, in this study, a Chinese businessman named Mr. Zhu acted against a China sales company of the footwear company called New Balance, a large company, because they were using the trademark Xin Bai Lun. Xin in Chinese means new, while Bai Lun is the phonetic translation of balance. And Mr. Zhu applied for the trademark um, in 2004, and it was issued to him in 2008. Um, and since that time, he had been selling his own footwear products under that trademark. The New Balance is an old company founded back in 1906, and it tried to fight that trademark registration, stating that they had been using the trademark even before Mr. Zhu filed. But the China Trademark Office was not won over by New Balance's arguments, and nor were the courts in Guangdong. So if we go on to the next slide, uh, we can see what, what happened. <clears throat> In 2017, the Guangzhou Municipal Intermediate People's Court ruled for Mr. Zhu, and they awarded him 98 million RMB in damages, which was judged to be half New Balance's profits earned during its time of infringement. While well, New Balance appealed to the Guangdong Higher People's Court, the appeal was dismissed, but they did reduce compensation to 5 million RMB, which was Mr. Zhu's actual damages. But the significant point was that the court also rejected New Balance's argument that Xin Bai Lun was a translation of the company name, 
because a proper translation for New Balance should have been Zin for New, Ping Heng, which is the actual translation for Balance. And this was also the name of New Balance's affiliate, Zin Ping Heng, Ascetic Shoe Company. And the court pointed out that New Balance had previously used the name New Ba Lun, which is the phonetic translation of New Balance. So in the end, New Balance's argument that Zin Bai Lun is the company name in Mandarin was simply not supported. And I think this case goes to show the care that needs to be taken when choosing what trademark to use. And now I'll hand over to Ellie for a, a, a case study in Latin America. Thank you again, Simon. Uh, very shortly, I want to explain a real case involving a Spanish cook who has a very good idea for a new food product. Uh, he wants to sell this product, which is protected by a patent, not only in Europe, but also in Latin American countries, using a brand consistent in his name because he's well -known, uh, a well-known cook in those countries. He first filed a European trademark application in May, in, in May 2018, and later on, in November of last year, he filed an international trademark uh, application claiming priority and designating, among others, uh, Mexico, Colombia, Cuba, and Brazil. I just want to explain the, the, the main advantages of, uh, for these uh, Spanish cooks using this system. First of all, it was very cheap. He saved more than 50% in official and professional fees. And uh, second, at the time of the record a license agreement with his distributor in Latin America, uh, which is going to be only one for all the countries, he only needs to file one recorder, recorder before WIPO and not going through the different offices. Just uh, two, two different uh, and, and very simple uh, points that should uh, that uh, show us the, the 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 consequences of using uh, this system. Um, well, allow me to to offer a, a, a couple of takeaway uh, points. Um, uh, perhaps the first is that the most important thing is be first to to file uh, your registration. Ideally. Uh, aim to register your trademark before you go. Um, you've heard the trademark regimes in China and Southeast Asia are generally first to file systems. So uh, that means the first person to file a trademark application will own that right in that country once the registration is granted. So if you don't apply for protection on time, others may do so first and benefit from your investments and, and reputation. Um, the best practice is, is, if you can, register before you go. Um, never allow your supplier or subcontractor or agent to register a trademark on your behalf. Many have done so because it seemed convenient, but it's not. It, it simply means that you've given ownership of your trademark to someone else uh, in those countries. Um, it's best to choose a local word or character mark for markets where Roman characters are not predominant. Um, this can prevent unwanted registrations and prepare the way for, for sales in, in the country of your interest at a future date. So do consider the relevant translation of your trademark carefully uh, and enlist the help of native speakers and, and marketing experts where you can. And, and lastly, do um, uh, make use of professional help. Uh, get the advice of a local lawyer or trademark agent to ensure you are adequately protected in relevant classes. Don't just consider the immediate class for the product to be sold, but consider whether the same trademark could be used on related items or services, you know, such as packaging, advertising, or, or merchandising. Um, so I know Ellie has some more, more tips for you. So over to you, Ellie. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, well, regarding filing strategies, uh, I think that the applicant will get the most out of the Madrid protocol if he chooses to use it for a trademark that will not encounter problems during examination in most of the contracting parties. Uh, the selected word, name, symbol, or device must be capable of distinguishing the owner's goods or services from the goods and or services of others to avoid any kind of, of observations uh, issued by the national offices 
or oppositions filed by third parties. Mm, also, um, for this is for European companies using an European framework application or situation as the basic application or situation increases the risk of central attack during the five-year dependency period. This is because oppositions and cancellations uh, can be raised by third parties on the basis of prior rights in any of the member countries of the European Union. So sometimes it is advisable to use as a basic mark a national framework. Uh, well, in the case of Latin America, it's clear that we need to expand the system to other countries. Um, it's quite real that we only have four countries member of this system. Um, and very important, once you obtain a trademark protection in the designated countries, don't forget to use the, the trademark for the classes protected just in order to avoid uh, the risk of cancellation due to the lack of use.